What's up, everybody? Ron Placone here reporting for Status Coup. If you like pornography and you live in Utah, things just got a little harder. Pun intended. So it turns out the Church of Latter-day Saints has taken over all pornography distribution in Utah. The only website you can go to is a website called Mormons Gone Wild. It features people in goofy underwear drinking coffee. All right, I'm just kidding. That's not that's not the news. That's not the news. That's not a real thing. I just made that up. Okay. Here's what actually happened. Pornhub has decided to block access in all of Utah. Why? Well, here's what's going on. This is from CNN. Pornhub blocks access in Utah over age verification law. So some of the Internet's biggest adults' websites, including Pornhub, are now blocking access to Utah users over a new age verification law that takes effect on Wednesday. Now, we reported on this policy uh, over here on Status Quo a little while ago. I also talked about it on my show, Get Your News On With Ron. Pornhub and other adult sites controlled by its parents, MindGeek, began blocking visitors with Utah-based IP addresses this week. Now, instead of seeing adult content when visiting those sites, affected users are shown a message expressing concern to uh, SB 287. That's the Utah law signed by Governor Spencer Cox in March that creates liability for porn sites that make their content available to people below the age of 18. Here's their quote. As you may know, your elected officials in Utah are requiring us to verify your age before allowing you access to our website, the message said. While safety and compliance are at the forefront of our mission, giving your ID card every time you want to visit an adult platform is not the most effective solution for protecting our users. And in fact, will put children and your privacy at risk. So this new policy requires people to uh, submit identification, verification, and pertinent information to their ID every time they want to go on an adult website. This creates a huge liability for Pornhub or any other website that has to handle all of that data. It makes them very susceptible for hacking. It ain't good. They don't want that kind of liability. Can't say I blame them. So they're saying, look, we're just not going to make your website available in this area. Now, now I understand that you don't want people not of the appropriate age going on porn websites. I certainly get that. But again, this is not the solution. One, it will lead to significant security concerns. Again, entering ID information every single time. That is a disaster waiting to happen. This also could lead to more censorship on the web. They're going to start with porn sites. Who knows where they're going to stop? What's going to be next? Is it going to be all social media? Is it going to be abortion information? Is it going to be LGBTQ information and resources? Keep in mind, we are dealing with the state of Utah here. Uh, this could also, let's be real here, folks. This could lead the youth to more dangerous parts of the web. I understand we're trying to keep people off of porn sites that aren't of the appropriate age to be there, but let's be real. When younger people want to get porn, they're going to find a way. This is coming from somebody who is just old enough to remember when we buried Playboys in the woods. All right. I'm, I'm just old enough to remember that. Barely old enough, but nonetheless, old enough to remember it. My point is, look. These kids, they're going to try to find stuff one way or another. Doing something like this could potentially lead them to more dangerous parts of the web. Uh, so this is an overreaching and ineffective policy. And now you can't even go to Pornhub if you're in Utah. Now, while all this is going on out in Utah, there's another thing going on, and that's the bill COSA, the Kids Online Safety Act. Now, similar to uh, the bill in Utah, the intentions of this bill uh, sound noble. They sound like, yeah, we want to keep kids safe online. We want to keep kids away from the toxicity of social media as much as possible to give them a positive social media experience, or at least as positive as any social media experience can be. I totally get that. I think that social media is very toxic for all of us, but it's especially toxic for children. I can't imagine if something like Facebook existed when I was in middle school. I, I can only imagine that. Uh, we had AIM at that point. That was enough. So I totally get that. But here's the thing with COSA. COSA 
is also a very, very overreaching bill. It is written in a very uh, vague context. It could lead to more censorship. We're going to get into that in just a second. But here's the deal. COSA has some kind of unlikely sponsors here, or uh, rather sponsors, not the white word, supporters. And uh, one of their big supporters is Lizzo. So Lizzo has been called on to end support of the Kids Online Safety Act amid concerns over censorship. So Lizzo, who, you know, I don't know Lizzo personally, obviously, but she seems to be uh, seems to be a pretty good person who, who has a decent, um, you know, a decent awareness when it comes to issues out there. And I would imagine if Lizzo was aware of all the details of this bill, uh, she would not be in support of it. I, I think she is likely not aware of the um, the full nature of this bill. Uh, so the activist group Fight for the Future, who I collaborate with, wants Lizzo to stop supporting a bill that's been condemned by the ACLU, GLAD, and the National Center for Transgender Equality. So earlier this month, Lizzo partnered with Dub to help promote the Kids Online Safety Act with an online petition. Her involvement with the project included a statement explaining her support of the bill. Social media is supposed to be a place where people can express themselves and be a source for beauty, confidence, not anxiety. Seeing the negative impact of social media on youth mental health today is devastating and has to stop. Join us to use your voice to help make change. Again, this all sounds great. This sounds like a noble cause. And if this bill was actually doing that, well, this would be a cool bill to support. Unfortunately, Here's the real deal with this bill. The activist group Fight for the Future on April 26 shared a petition calling on Lizzo to revoke her support for the bill. Opponents of the bill noted that it's been condemned by organizations, including the ACLU, GLAD, and the National Center for Transgender Equality, over concerns that the bill's vague language could potentially lead to conservative-led censorship of LGBTQ content, reproductive health care sources, excuse me, reproductive health care resources, and more. So let's go to the letter itself. So here's the big problem with COSA. COSA would allow state attorneys general, think Ken Paxton from Texas, who is actively investigating the families of trans children, to dictate what content platforms are allowed to recommend to underage users. While the bill's supporters fantasize that this will incentivize platforms to moderate more responsibly, for example, by removing content promoting eating disorders, the reality is that they will simply moderate in a more risk-averse way. For example, by suppressing all content where eating disorders are discussed at all, even if it's important self-help content or content directing young people to resources for support. Again, this is, this is similar to all the algorithms that aren't actually humans that can understand context and nuance that are just deciding what to censor and what not to censor. This is that whole playbook being seen all over again. More than 100 human rights organizations oppose COSA. Meanwhile, the right-wing Heritage Foundation supports it and has said it will help stop big tech from, quote, turning kids trans. We know this is not the team Lizzo wants to be on. So that's what's really going on with COSA. It's an overreaching piece of legislation. It's written in a very vague way. It could hurt the ability of young people uh, to connect with LGBTQ resources and LGBTQ communities and support that they have online. So there are just tons of inadequacies of this bill. Now, they're claiming that this bill has been rewritten. Uh, Senator Blumenthal has claimed on social media that, oh, no, no, we reworked this bill and we addressed all of the concerns that groups like Fight for the Future pointed out. However, groups like Fight for the Future and others have indicated, no, you haven't. We looked at the most recent version of the bill and no, our minds are not at ease. We are still in opposition to this bill. So please go to fightforthefuture.org to learn more. And folks, I will be on the road. You can catch me on tour. May 12th, I'll be in Los Angeles, California. That's my third show of three, working on my Edinburgh Hour. June 16th, Madison. June 17th, Minneapolis, Minnesota. June 23rd, Detroit. June 28th, Bloomington, Indiana. And June 29th, Chicago. August 16th through 27th, I'll be at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland. And October 21st, I'll be doing a show in San Pedro, California. Tickets and all information can be found at my website, romplacone.com. That's romplacone.com. And please, if you get a chance, go over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash romplacone, and watch my pilot, Loner. 
And in the meantime, this is Ron Placone for Status Quo signing out.